Empire's on the run. Alex Jones and the GCN Radio Network. Sold out for weeks due to the difficult and extensive proprietary process behind its creation, the exclusive InfoWars Life Secret 12 formulation is now back in stock in the last limited shipment of 2014. The most bioactive form that has been created with our proprietary process. This ultra-clean vitamin B12 nutraceutical has been carefully crafted and developed over the last two years and is based on cellular science of how your body actively absorbs essential nutrients. Secret 12 is taken by mouth, right on the tongue, and then swallowed. No needles, no injections. Vitamin B12 deficiency is linked to scores of serious problems. And Secret 12 is a fusion of two organic proprietary forms of vitamin B12, bringing you a true nutraceutical quality vitamin B12, Secret 12. Secret 12 is an excellent Christmas gift and is tailor-made to boost your New Year's resolutions. Supplies of Secret 12 are very limited. Secure yours today at InfoWarsLife.com or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. 2015 is almost here, and with it comes those New Year's resolutions to finally transform your body the way you want it. There's a reason over 88% of New Year's resolutions fail. Make this year different by equipping yourself with Oxy Powder, the next level in cleansing the body naturally. Using Super Oxygenation, Oxy Powder, available through InfoWarsLife.com, gently cleanses the body while you sleep with easy capsules. Tens of thousands of individuals have used Oxy Powder to cleanse their bodies and aid in their transformations. Even InfoWars Nightly News Director Rob Dew has been using Oxy Powder with incredible success. Yes. Took it that first day, and then I took it for six more days after that. 12 pounds melted off in about a week. I'd say a week, seven days. 2015 can be different. Diet and exercise are important, but a lot of us have already tried that. Oxy Powder flushes it out. Secure your Oxy Powder at InfoWarsLife.com. That's InfoWarsLife.com or 888-253-3139. The average person's life is filled with unexpected challenges. Unlock the energy it takes to defeat these daily beasts with super male or super female vitality, specifically designed to assist the body in regulating proper hormone balance to create superior vitality in males and females. Supercharge and conquer your world at InfoWarsLife.com or call 1-88-253-3139. The government's Department of Homeland Security is buying up loads of ammo. At the same time, they're restricting civilians' rights to own and purchase firearms. Can you put two and two together? Infidel body armor can stop every round, including hollow points and 308 sniper rounds. Is reasonably priced and fully legal. But for how long? Go to InfidelBodyArmor.com, spelled I-N-F-I-D-E-L BodyArmor.com. Infidel Body Armor just won't quit. Live from Austin, Texas, broadcasting worldwide, it's Alex Jones. I know you can see me now, here's a surprise. Coming up, report feds pressuring more doctors to ask patients about their guns. Ah, oh. under Obamacare, they now become total agents of the state. That's a Kit Daniels article, just went live at Infowars.com. And PrisonPlanet.com. Be sure and spread that out to everybody and get it on Facebook and Twitter. Gun control advocate urges kids to inform on parents, turn in their firearms. Yeah, I mean, they actually have them steal the firearms in the video and take them to the police. Talk about super crazy and super dangerous. Also, Walmart, Amazon, Kmart, Sears told to stop selling toy guns by the police in New York, who I guess are the state attorney general. Just thinks he's God. No judge, no jury. And the governor said, if you're a gun owner, just get out of the state. Or if you're pro-life, just get out of the state. Speaking of North Korea, I'm going to get Dr. Steve Pachinik's take on that. He's been to North Korea. He did a lot with South Korea. We're going to get his take on the situation with Russia. He grew up in Cuba, has a very interesting background. We're going to cover the waterfront, just bam, bam, bam with Steve Pachinik. Uh, but look at these headlines. North Korea's internet is having serious problems. It's already limited to just a few cities, as we showed satellite photos. Only two cities have power. That's being reported by The Verge newspaper. But we're to believe they ran these sophisticated hacking attacks. Well, I said last week, probably staged to bring in a bunch of cybersecurity laws. Or it was other hacker groups, uh, and they're blaming North Korea. North Korea responded by saying, we'll blow the whole U.S. up. 
How about you blow up the whole galaxy while you're at it? They can't even tie their shoelaces from what I know. North Korea threatens strikes on U.S. amid hacking claims. And they've come out and said that they did not do it and that it's a false flag by Obama. I hate to be agreeing uh, with North Korea, but that's certainly where it points. Sony gets a new threat. Anonymous says hackers aren't Korean. Release film or more hacks coming. Yeah, a bunch of these past hacks have been admittedly not North Korea. Of the Apple cloud, of, uh, of other major groups. We've got an expert on cybersecurity and somebody that wrote books on it with Tom Clancy, Steve Pachenik. We're going to cover the waterfront here, Doc. StevePachenik.com. His new book's out there. You can find it at StevePachenik.com. Steve Pachenik Talks is the new book. Uh, but, Steve, uh, let's, let's get into your take briefly on what's happening with North Korea uh, and this whole move to say we're not going to show Team America. We're not going to show this movie now. Is that just an attempt to set the precedent for the feds to ban movies by fiat? No, I don't think so. I think what the problem really was, and you have to understand the uh, dysfunctional uh, level of Hollywood. Number one, you have to understand Sony is not an American company. That was not made clear to anybody in the United States or the world. Sony is a Japanese company. It's a wholly owned subsidiary of a Japanese Daibatsu. So the issue really relates between North Korea and Japan, which has a longstanding history of discontent and fighting since World War II and prior to World War II. This has nothing to do with the United States. This has much more to do with Kim, Kim Jong-un, Kim Il-sung, who had a whole, long history against the Japanese. And this has to do with Abe, and his handling of his economy, his handling of cybersecurity, and where Japan stands relative to Korea. I don't think our own government really understood this in terms of the fact that this is really a Japan versus Korean narrative, not a United States versus a North Korean narrative. The North Koreans can say whatever they want, but they attacked the Japanese company. They did not attack Weinstein Group. They did not attack Warner Brothers. They did not attack an American company. Sony is a wholly owned Japanese company. You know, that's a great point. I was thinking that last week because, I mean, for those that don't know, the Chinese and the Japanese absolutely hate each other, at least from what happened in World War right. II. Even bigger atrocities by the Japanese in uh, what is now North and South Korea, and they still follow that World War II propaganda that the original uh, you know, granddaddy came out of, that they're still at war with Japan. They're constantly threatening to nuke Japan. And so you're saying this is Japanese anti-North Korea propaganda? Oh, this is totally between North Korea and Japan. I mean, it's not an accident. They could have put any show that they wanted to, the fact that it was a North Korean semblance of, of the leader. There's all kinds of videos of the North Korean leader that's, that's never been hacked. But the real reason is you have two anti-Japanese films coming on. Uh, you know, the one about, with uh, uh, what's her name, uh, Angelique Jolie, Unbroken. And then you've got this film, which comes as anti-Korean, but comes out of Japan. And the Japanese do not admit to the fact that they've killed hundreds of millions of people in Korea, in Japan, in Vietnam. This is an old story that has never been closed by the Japanese, and the nationalism in Japan has increased because Abe has an economic process problem. And in turn, Kim Jong-un is attacking Japan to warn them that this is not going to continue. By the way, much of the money that came out of North Korea came from the pachinko parlors of Japan, the gambling term, and the Japanese don't admit that. So you've got a whole special relationship that, unfortunately, our president got into a narrative that didn't belong to the United States. Sure. It didn't belong to cyber attacking. It belonged to a province. Okay. So you think the theory that it's a false flag, why is Kim Jong-un then saying that Obama and Sony did it? You know, I don't even know if he said anything, quite frankly. You don't really know what, who says what to whom. But I can tell you that the relationship between Japan and North Korea is a determinant relationship that's historically determined, not by the narratives that we create now. The minute I saw that, I said, Sony's in trouble because it's Japanese, and the man who runs it, Linton, who was the head of a publishing company, doesn't know anything. Doesn't know how to manage anything. Well, they admit issues. Sony is in trouble and may be sold. As well, usual, a very unique perspective. You may be right, probably are. Uh, we know that they're in a propaganda war against each other. I've just got to say, I, I think of the Japanese, despite their past uh, atrocities, we have our own here as a lot better like the than, the, the, than that Kim Jong-un. Alex, Japanese never had a Nuremberg trial. 
like the Germans had. We have never indicted any of the Japanese war criminals who started biological warfare and killed American soldiers, British soldiers, Dutch soldiers, and killed Chinese civilians in Manchuria. We've never had that. And Hito has always been covered up as a butterfly enthusiast as opposed to the man who ran the Japanese biological warfare. So we have an old history here that comes out, and Kim Jong-un is emphasizing that point. The narrative goes away from America, right between Japan and North Korea. Now, they let you into North Korea, is that right? Yeah, I got in there through another passport. North Korea is basically a country like East Germany was for West Germany. It's, it's a failed state, but we cannot unite it with an increasingly effective state like South Korea. And the reason for that is if we put the two countries together, they will implode. South Korea cannot handle the poverty and the scarcity of commodities and, and, uh, and the ruling class, which, based is on, which is based on kleptocracy. So basically, the United States and the other countries that are involved in Asia are doing it very slowly. And, and quite frankly, it's China's responsibility. China is the uh, guarantor for North Korea. China knows that very well. China has to handle North Korea. China will handle the hacking. And the Chinese are responsible when it comes to that. They know very well that North Korea can get out of control. So it's not an issue where the United States has to get into this or anybody outside of Hollywood, which is a dysfunctional institution, with another dysfunctional institution in okay. North Korea. All right, let's shift gears, because I want to get you on something about your life. It's very interesting. Uh, Dr. Steve Pachinik joins us right now. Uh, we don't know a lot about, uh, I mean, how you were brought up, what happened. You were born in Cuba, right? Tell us about that, and then give us your take on Cuba. No, I was born in Cuba as a, fact, as a matter of fact that the great liberal FDR did not allow a lot of the Holocaust survivors or my father and mother to come in through 41 uh, after the, during the war. My father was in the French Army. My mother escaped to Spain and Lisbon, and they brought uh, visas into uh, Cuba. It was like Casablanca, the movie. So I grew up, I didn't, I grew up there to the age of five or six. We left. My mother spoke Russian. We knew that the Russians were coming in little by little. I didn't know Castro would be a communist, but she didn't like the Russians. She didn't like the communists. She didn't like the fascists. So we eventually got to the United States. The fact that I have fought the Cubans, uh, Fidel's people, in Panama, and they're very effective. They're, they're very smart. Uh, they run a very effective PSYOPs campaign in Panama and elsewhere in Honduras and in Africa. The real issue is that after 50 years, the embargo really hasn't worked. What it's done, in effect, is made a lot of Midwestern farmers very wealthy, which I don't uh, gr uh, grudge their uh, wealth. They, they made over $300 million in wheat and, and commodity sales. But the point of fact is it doesn't work anymore. And Cuba, after 50 years, is not a really a strategic threat to anybody along the United States. We have so many Cubans now in Miami and the United States, and with the uh, Burton Hill Act here, where they can come to the United States, touch the ground, they basically become United States citizens. So Cuba has always played an important part in the history of the United States. For example, during the Revolutionary War, Cuba was a transit point for which Benjamin Franklin and many of our founding fathers received uh, illegal money from Spain and France and the guns and ammunition in order to fight the British. Most people don't know that. But eventually, Cuban was in with the de facto province of the United States. It has never been a strategic problem. Even during the Cuban Missile Crisis, I think Kennedy was not capable of handling it. We, we had a stand down. Eventually, it came through. Uh, you know, Kennedy became a false legend. But the reality is, enough is enough. Cuba is really not our problem. Our problem now is really nothing. We handled the Soviet Union very well. Now we've effectively handled Putin very well with the ruble. Uh, and the effectiveness of the American economy. We're just formidable. I mean, coming this Christmas, America has to understand how strong we are in terms of our capitalist structure. And this results from the Bretton Woods Conference of 1944, where everything in the world is denominated against the dollar, including the ruble. And we've just knocked down, in this administration, they've knocked down the ruble, they've knocked down the, the rating of Russia, and the junk bond, and so now, Effectively, the United States is a superpower, not only militarily, but economically. So but, Doctor, really let me stop you right there. Let me just stop you for a minute. Yeah. This sure. is great game stuff. I mean, this sounds like British tactics to knock everybody else out so we're number one. But meanwhile, our same elite is taking our basic freedoms as well and foisting it into this global system. 
I mean, I want the American system to be successful and, and, and to be the culture of the world, but I wanted to do that through the fact that it's moral and upright.